coffee at him, not us. But you know what? It ain't about coffee, and it's not about anything except Jesus Christ. And I want to welcome every single one of you to Save the Cowboy. Um, it's a beautiful day outside. There are, I, I learned a few things about myself and about our community this morning. The first thing is that everybody is afraid of something. I don't care how big of a fella you think you are or how tough of a cowboy that you think you are. Everybody is afraid of something. I figured out that I added one thing to what I'm afraid of because the only thing that I thought I was afraid of was sharks. I saw Jaws at a tender age, and I realized this morning coming in that I am also afraid of llamas that have been shaved. <laughs> Those things just freak me out. Kind of got me a little nervous and stuff. I don't know what it was about it, so if you want to scare the, scare the pants off of me, not that you'd want to do that, but if you wanted to do something like that, just show me a llama. Also, um, it... it there was, a, there was a bicycle ride this morning. There was like 5,000 people in, in skinny panties driving down the road on these bicycles. And I laughed because I hit a skunk right in front of them. <laughs> You're welcome. That'll teach them they should have been at cowboy church and then riding around in their long underwear. Uh, <laughs> welcome to Save the Cowboy, I told you. It's, we got some visitors all the way from Atlanta. Welcome, y'all. And um, anyway, we've got a bunch of people here from out of town uh, with the Velgers Dyke clan tribe uh, for the baby dedication that we're going to do right after we get done here. So we've got an action packed day. Um, oh, yeah, there's one other thing. And uh, I, I believe Ken will smile at this because I realize that uh, today's the 23rd, I think. June 23rd, 2013 is the official Elbert County Have a Garage Sale Day. I, 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 didn't, I didn't get the memo. I would have had a garage sale. It was pretty crazy. So <laughs> me and Riley, we were driving down the road, and she's like, everybody's having a garage sale. I was like, well, not everybody. We passed by Ken's. Okay, everybody. <laughs> so anyway, y'all ought to like spread that out a little bit. Maybe everybody would... Uh, not be so spread out. So anyway, before we go any further, let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, I just thank you for all the cowboys and cowgirls that have come here this morning. And God, we ain't going to let the devil get a hold of us this morning. We're going to be joyful and, and we're going to have fun today and we're going to learn about you. And God, I just thank you for who you are and what you did for us. Because you went and died on the cross and paid the price for our sins that we, so that we could live forever with you. God, show us how simple your, your word really is and, and just speak to our hearts and guts. And God, I know that you're going to change somebody's life today. God, we pray all these things in your most heavenly name. Amen. If you got your Bibles, turn with me to Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. I had a... Uh, I worked with a guy... And it's funny that his name was Luke. It wasn't chapter 9, but his name was Luke. He wasn't a... That was funny. God, y'all are going to make me work today, aren't you? Wake up. His name was Luke, and he said, we worked in the field together. I worked for the prison system for a number of years, like you see on TV, horseback, where we made those fellas that had been convicted of a felony uh, go out and pick cotton and chop weeds and... I worked their tails off, so you're welcome. Um, <laughs> and anyway, uh, he was telling me about this cult he had, and he said, you know what, I, I never really claimed to be that much of a horseman or a cowboy. He said, but I cannot get this horse to lead. I said, well, can you, can you get a halter on it? And he said, well, yeah, I can get a halter on it, but you go to walk off and it walks the other way. He said, you got any advice for me? And I said, well, that's pretty simple. He said, well, then, then how do you do it? And I said, well, I, I really can't tell you. I'd have to show you, but I don't mind coming out. And it's not, that, it's not that I'm some big, you know, horse whisperer or anything. It was shown to me, and it's really not that difficult, but I don't mind uh, coming out and, and showing, him, or showing you what to do. And he's like, okay. So anyway, I got out there, and, and he's standing in this round pen, and he's got the, the lead rope hooked on the halter, and he said, see? And he goes to walk off, and I mean, that colt just goes to barreling backwards. He said, I, I, can't, 
I, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And he, you know, he could get him to go in a circle, but when you walk off to lead him, he'd just freak out. And I said, well, you know, the thing you have to remember that a lot of times with horses is you got to use the kiss method. Now, everybody knows what the kiss method is, right? Keep it simple, stupid, right? And I know you ain't supposed to say stupid, but let's, you know, let's be honest. Sometimes it's just, it really is that simple. Just keep it simple. And so I walked up there and I said, the first thing we're going to do is this. And I reached up there and I took that lead rope off and I threw it in the ground. I said, you can't make this horse do what you want it to do and be effective at it. He's bigger than you. He's stronger than you. I didn't tell him this, but I, I was pretty sure the horse was smarter than he was too. So I like what, who was it, Ray Hunt, that said anybody thinks that, or it might have been Buck Brandeman or somebody, said, uh, whoever said horses are stupid is stupid. That's about how this deal was going. And so I took that lead rope off and I said, you know what? Just forget all of that. And so anyway, I stood in the middle of the arena, or the round pen, and you know, that colt kind of looked at me, and then he was a lot more interested in what was going on outside that round pen. And I kind of picked up that lead rope just for something to, to help me and everything, and I started smooching to him, and I kind of got him running in a circle around that round pen. And as long as he would look at me, I was quiet. But the second that his focus got off of me, boy, I started making him go faster. And then whenever his attention was on me, I would let him come to a full stop. And as long as he was looking at me, nothing happened. But the second he took his eyes off of me, things got hard on him again. Well, after a while, and this takes a little bit of practice, keeping it and knowing how long to go and, and when not to, but after a while, what I started doing was whenever he would look at me, he would come to a stop. And where he used to stop and do like this, and then look out and then look back and everything, here in a second he turned toward me. And I just stood there until I lost his attention, and then we got going back the other way. And when I've alternated this back and forth, and, and it really did. It took about 20 minutes of doing this and everything. But here in a second, whenever he stopped and he turned and he looked at me, he walked right up to me and stuck his head down and licked his lips. And Luke said, well, that's all good and well, but I don't, see, I don't see where this has to do with leading. And I turned around and I walked off and that colt walked right behind me. And we walked around. I stopped and the colt stopped. I backed up and the colt backed up. I made him focus on me and Luke said, well, I don't really understand that. And I said, well, the colt figured out that the safest place is right next to me. It's hard when he's not next to me. It's hard when he's not paying attention to me. The most comfortable place for him was right next to me. It is a lot easier to follow me than run from me. And the place with the most rest was right next to me, not away from me. And the third thing I told him, I said, I didn't make that colt do anything. I let him make a decision. And when you let a horse make a decision that he chooses to do, you've let him make a right decision. Keep it simple, stupid. I got a text from my dad a while ago, and I had the great privilege of praying with my grandmother. She can't see real good because she's 90 years old and got macular degeneration, but her mind is as sharp as a tack, and I got to pray with her right over here. And we were at her house, and we were putting a bed together, and... Anyway, we got over there, and is it, is it just me? Is it, is it like a Weatherby family curse or something that when you need a flathead screwdriver, all you can find is Phillips, and if you need a Phillips, all you can find is flatheads? And so we're putting this bed together, and there was a flathead, and we had 42,000 Phillips of varying sizes and star shapes, and some Phillips that y'all have never even seen before, but we didn't have a flathead. And so we're sitting there, and Dad said... You know, we're trying to hold on to it, and it's slipping through your fingers, and you're like, well, maybe that's good enough, and you're trying to hold on to the other side, and nothing's working. So Dad got mad. <laughs> yeah, he did. He got mad and stormed off. He was going to go find a flathead. And he come back with a pipe wrench. I said, now, what are you going to do with that? And he goes, I don't know, but if I have to, I'll beat it down. And I sat there, and I looked at that flathead screw deal, and I thought, 
there's no sense in getting mad about this. I reached in my pocket and I pulled out a quarter, stuck it in that flathead and I said, now turn it. He got so mad. Not at me. He said, do you know how many times that I have needed a flathead screwdriver and it never dawned on me to pull a coin out of my pocket to use? And he said, that is so simple. But God's Word is just like that. We tend to make things way over complicated. We get mad whenever it doesn't go like we think it should go. And instead of simplifying it, we make it more complicated and we go get pipe wrenches. Or we put lead ropes on things that we cannot control and we try to drag them around to make them do what we want them to do. And then we get frustrated all over because it doesn't work. Does that sound familiar? Maybe it's just me. I, you know, maybe I'm the only one that goes through stuff like that on a daily basis. But I'm pretty sure that I'm not. You know, 1 Corinthians 1.18, and you can turn there if you want to, but, but just listen. 1 Corinthians 1.18 says this, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For the message of the cross is foolishness. Keep it simple, stupid. It real, I mean, the message of the cross really is that simple. He lays it out in black and white. And he says, if you will do these things, you will be happy. I didn't say that things were always going to be perfect. I said that you will be happy, not despite problem, problems, but in spite of problems. If you will only do these things, I am showing you the way. Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through the Son. I am the way, I am the truth. What he tells us <laughs> is gospel, isn't it? But we treat it as a self-help book. Oh, I can do that. I don't want to do that. That's too difficult. That'll make my life hard. I just want the easy, greasy chicken life. Chicken life, Christian life. I was thinking of greasy chicken. <laughs> Man, y'all are killing me today. <sighs> it is okay to laugh in church. We've been here for a long time and lightning has not struck yet. <laughs> for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. That's the NIV version. The simplified cowboy version says this. What we preach seems stupid to the lost, but to those who will ride into eternity, it is the true power of God. Let me read that again. What we preach seems stupid to the lost, but to those who will ride into eternity, it is the true power of God. Keep it simple, stupid. How do we keep this gospel message stu uh, stupid? How do we keep this gospel message stupid? How about, how do we keep this gospel message stupid, simple? What are y'all laughing about now? You laugh when you're not supposed to. <laughs> Luke 9, 23 and 24 says this. Jesus says, if any of you want to walk my path, if any of you want to ride for me, if any of you want to be my disciple, if any of you want to know want to truly live, here's what you got to do. You're going to have to deny yourself, which we talked about that two weeks ago. What does, what does, does denying ourselves mean? What denying ourselves means is we got to be able to tell ourselves no. Pretty tough, isn't it? We got to be able to tell ourselves no. You'll have to take up your cross every day. Now, when it says take up your cross, he's not talking about being miserable and being dead. He's talking about being truly alive and being all in. You can't just be a Christian on Sunday mornings during Save the Cowboy Church or while you're watching online or at the Bible study. God wants you to be a follower of His every day. He wants you to be all in, not sometimes in. And you have to follow me. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So when Jesus says, follow me, how do we do that? How do we follow Him? It sounds simple. 
All you got to do is follow him. But somehow we've made it really complicated. And I'm going to show you a few stupid things that may keep it a little more simple for you. What, if you want to be a follower of Jesus Christ, when he says, follow me, what he wants you to do is he wants you to have a stupid faith. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. I want you to have a stupid faith. And what I mean by a stupid faith is I'm talking about a stupid, crazy kind of faith. Where you don't let nothing bother you because you know who you are and you know who Jesus Christ is. And by gosh, you're not going to let anything come in between that. But remember, 1 Corinthians 1.18 says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to those who are being saved, it is the true power of God. I want you to have a stupid faith. A faith that cannot be shaken. What does a faith, what does a stupid faith look like? It is denying yourself. It is being able to say no when every part of your worldly sinful lives wants you to do something. Be a man and tell yourself no. Be a woman and tell yourself no. You can do it because God said you could. You will not explode if you keep your mouth shut. Some people are laughing at that. Some people are not. What does a stupid faith look like? Luke 9, 23 and 24 says, If you want to walk my path, well, if it's his path, wouldn't you be following him? If you want to walk my path, you must deny yourself. You must take up your cross or go all in. What does stupid faith look like? It is denying yourself. It is going all in for the brand. And it is following Jesus no matter where he goes. It doesn't matter if he goes off into somewhere scary. As a matter of fact, I'm here to tell you that if you think you're following God and he ain't never led you somewhere scary, you're probably not following God. Trust me, I know. And there's a lot of other people in here I know have experienced the same thing. It is following him no matter where he leads. Keep it simple. How do we follow God? We must have a stupid faith, a crazy kind of faith. And a lot of us think we have faith. But do you? Can I talk you out of it? Is there anything more important to you than, than your relationship, than your ride with God? If it is, your faith may be a little shaky. We must have stupid trust. A stupid kind of trust where, I mean, you don't care where God is going, you're going to follow like a dummy. And you know what? It's those kind of followers that God uses the most mighty, and those are the happiest. Because they don't worry about anything. They're like, I'm following God, and where He goes, I'm going to go, and I don't even care if it gets a little rank. I'm going to follow Him. Do you have a stupid kind of trust? Well, what's the difference in faith and trust? Are the, aren't those the same things? No, not necessarily. Because faith is something you have. It's like if you have a horse. You have faith. It is the principles by which you live and by which you believe. But trust is riding that horse. Because there's a lot of people out there that's got horses that never get rode, never get taken care of. Maybe they get fed a little bit, but that's it. If you had to describe your faith, is it a tool that you use to gather the lost, to go out and ride and see this great, magnificent world that God has made for us? Or do you stay in the recliner and your faith is out there in the pasture and you don't know when the last time you checked on it is? Faith is having a horse. Trust is riding it. If you want to follow Christ, you've got to have a stupid kind of faith. A faith that cannot be rocked. You've got to have a stupid kind of trust. Follow Him anywhere, and I guarantee you guys, if you would quit looking at God like shaved llamas, you'd be better off. Because we're afraid to follow Him. What is people going to say? You're going to become some sort of Jesus freak. So what, man? Y'all... These people that say stuff like that, let them think whatever the heck they want to think. You're going to live forever 
in heaven with no pain. And if they want to join you, that's great. And if they don't, that's their decision. Who cares what other people think? You care about what God thinks. What does a stupid kind of trust look like? Denying your natural tendency to take the reins. Boy, some of us are riding for God, but we're real quick to snatch up those reins, aren't we? Oh, God's going too fast. I better slow him down a little bit because I ain't ready. Or, can God not see that canyon coming? I got to turn him because God doesn't know what he's doing. Let me give you a little insight to something that changed my life. Did you know that there is nothing in your life that has happened will happen today, or will happen the rest of your heart-beating, lung-breathing, brain-living life, that God went, oh crap, I didn't see that coming. Oh no, what are we going to do? Oh. It's not going to happen, folks. You need to have a stupid kind of trust. Leave those reins alone. God's not going to take the reins away from you. But I guarantee you, you picking up those reins are going to keep you from being happy more than making God do what you want Him to. You must go all in with your trust, not just when it appears Jesus is doing what you want. Everybody wants that Christian phase where, where everything goes just right. Woo! All my prayers are being answered. My bank account's getting full. Everything's going great. It's raining grass is, 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 is up this high. Cows are fat. Boy, life is good. I love this God deal. But what happens when it don't rain? And when you lose your job? What happens when your marriage is falling apart? What happens then? Do you have a stupid kind of trust in God? That you're going to do exactly what that Bible tells you to do? Or are you just going to take up those reins and go a different direction? Because you don't like the way that's going. It is following Him no matter where He leads. Sometimes, guys, you just got to close your eyes and pull a man from Snowy River. And if you ain't never done that, I'm sorry. Sometimes you just got to yell, scream, whatever it takes. But follow God. Have that stupid kind of trust that you're going to go wherever He goes. And if He is for you, who can be against you? That's biblical right there. You need to have a stupid kind of faith. Keep it simple. You need to have a stupid kind of faith. It don't matter what's going on. You're going to believe in Jesus Christ and nothing's going to talk you out of it. You need to have a stupid kind of trust where you're going to go where He leads and it don't matter what the surroundings look like or the circumstances or anything else. You're going to follow Him. And you need to have a stupid kind of joy. Joy in the Lord is a choice. Joy is not a feeling or emotion. Joy does not mean that you're going to go around French kissing unicorns and blowing colorful soapy bubbles. Okay? It ain't going to happen. You're gonna, there's going to be problems. This world is a sinful world. This is not heaven. Heaven is waiting on us. Perfection is waiting on us. This is not perfection. And if you are looking... For a perfect life down here, you are going to be a miserable wretch. Because perfection is only found in Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 and 9. See if this... Does this describe you to a T? Or are you the complete opposite of this? 2 Corinthians 4, 8 and 9. My wife posted this on the other day on her worst preacher's wife ever. I didn't say that, she did. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. Folks, bad times are going to happen. Hard times are going to happen. But you can make it through it if you're following God. We need to have a stupid kind of joy. And, it, and it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a choice that we make. That doesn't mean that we're going to be giddy all the time and, you know, there's going to be bad times, but we can still be joyful even whenever it's bad. Why? Because we choose to be and God gives us that right. What does stupid joy look like? Denying yourself when you want to whine and complain. 
How many of you this morning have whined and complained, do not raise your hand? Because if everybody didn't, they, there might be a big chance that somebody might be telling a fib. But, and maybe it was just a fleeting thought. Quit whining, quit complaining. Didn't, that, that's denying yourself, saying, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm not going to be a complainer anymore. Going all in and being joyful in Christ, because that's the only way to be joyful in life. The only way you can be truly happy while you're down here is to have a relationship to ride with Jesus Christ. Folks, I cannot say it any simpler than that. And I know that some of you, some of you is young and you're sitting there thinking, eh, whatever, whatever, I have fun, I can be joyful at the bar. Yeah, I've had a lot of joyful times at the bar. I ain't gonna lie. But it, it's not lasting. That's fake stuff. That's like eating a Twinkie. It's real good while it happens, but when later... <laughs> messes up my girlish figure. <laughs> Following Christ in the good times as well as the bad. You see what we're saying here? It really is that simple. Jesus says in Luke 9, 23 and 24, if you want to walk my path, you're going to have to deny yourself, take up your cross every day and follow me. In other words, you're going to have to be able to tell yourself no. You're going to have to go all in and you're going to have to follow where I lead you. Through the good and the bad. The last thing that we need to have is a stupid obedience, and this is probably the hardest one. God wrote the book on life, and all we have to do is follow it. People that say, well, I've never heard God speak to me. You know what the Bible is? The Bible is God's Word in written form speaking directly to you, if you'll just pick it up and read it. Prayer is how we talk to God. The Bible is how God talks to us. It's not the only way, but it is the best way. People say, oh, I don't understand it. Ah, oh, bull crap. Pick you one up and read it. That's an excuse and you know it. We got some simplified cowboy versions. Now, they're not real Bible. They're paraphrases, but it'll help you. Join a Bible study. There's a bunch of them going on. If you need to find one, let me know. We'll point you in the right direction. We need to have a stupid obedience. Seek first the kingdom of God and all else will be given unto you. Can you obey that? People say, oh, being a Christian is too tough. There's nothing tough about that. It's pretty black and white. Seek, Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and everything else will be given to you. Simple as that. Well, why is things so difficult? Seek first the kingdom of God and all else will be given unto you. What does stupid obedience look like? You need to just obey Him and don't, don't matter. You know what? It don't really matter what you think about it. Do what God tells you to do, folks. You'll be a lot better off for it. You'll be a lot happier. You either obey God or you obey the world and yourself. That's it. You either obey God or you're obeying the world and yourself. Deny yourself. Deny the world. Obey God. You can't go all in and fold at the same time. Think about that. You go all in in poker, you're giving everything you got. Hey, you don't worry about Jack there at all. There ain't no greater sound in the world than a baby with his parents in church. Amen? Amen. That's Jack saying amen too. <laughs> go all in. You can't go all in and fold at the same time. I'm going all in, fold. But that's, a lot, that's what a lot of people do in their Christian lives. They want to go all in and fold at the same time. They want the best of both worlds. They want their cake and eat it too. Well, don't we all? You want your cake and eat it too? Follow Jesus Christ. You'll be happy and you'll totally tick everybody else off because you're so happy and, and it doesn't matter what happens, you're not going to be shaken. You want your cake and eat it too? Follow Jesus Christ. He gives us everything. Eternal life, eternal happiness, no pain, no sorrow. When we get up there and all He asks us to do is to tell others about Him while we're down here. Seek first the kingdom of God and all else will be given unto you. What does stupid obedience look like? You either obey God or you obey yourself. You can't go all in and fold at the same time. And I ask you this question. On stupid obedience, how far will you follow Him? 
to a hard spot in your life? Do you quit when it gets hard? Are you willing to follow Him to a good spot? You know, whenever you have all these problems and you're going along and then everything gets going good and so you're like, hey, I don't need God anymore. He fixed all my problems. Are you willing to follow Him to a disagreement? Nothing tears churches apart like disagreements. And there's no need. We are an imperfect people following a perfect God. I'm not perfect, you're not perfect, none of us are perfect, but we can still we can still get along. It really is as easy as that. Who cares if we disagree? We still love the same God and we love each other. Amen? How far will you follow Him? You willing to follow Him all the way to eternity? I hope so. We opened up that round pen... I was standing by the gate. That colt was still right next to me, and I opened up the round pen and walked out. Luke said, that's stupid. You shouldn't be able to do that. And I said, we all have a stupid choice. We can all fight what is best for us, or we can follow it. Do you feel like the devil has your lead rope? Is that what it feels like? You feel like the devil's got your lead rope and he's just jerking on it and making you do things? If you'll ask him to, Jesus will walk up there and take that lead rope off and drop it and allow you to follow him. Do you want to be set free? Do you feel like you're on the inside looking out with no true purpose? No true joy. You hadn't been happy in years. You've really faked people out. But you're miserable. You want a happy life? Jesus is offering it to you right now. Are you longing for a safe, comfortable place to rest? Jesus Christ is what you're looking for. It is the truth. He is the way. And He is the life that you've been longing for. There is nothing else that can fill that hole except Him. Jesus is going to let you make the decision. You can fight what is best for you, or you can follow Him. You can't do both. You're either all in, or you're folding. Unfortunately, there will be people that fold. And that breaks my heart but there are going to be people in here, you, that decide to follow Him, to have a stupid faith, a stupid kind of trust, a stupid kind of joy, and a stupid kind of obedience. And the result of that is more than we could ever, ever hope.